hello 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 and welcome to today's video welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new here my name is Whitney and welcome to my channel <laughs> um, today we are gonna do like a what's I'm gonna start a what's for dinner video today and we're making pot roast so let's get started I love this pot roast recipe it's an instant pot recipe you can do it in the slow cooker but I prefer the instant pot and I'll tell you why but let's get this going and I'll show you what's in it Okay, so this is my basic roast. Um, this is just like almost a two and a half pound chuck roast. Um, I actually usually use a deer roast when I make this, but I didn't feel like digging through the freezer, so I just went and bought a new one, um, a beef one. So brown gravy mix, ranch seasoning, and beefy onion soup. And this is for later, but an onion, uh, sliced carrots in a can, and some potatoes. I use sliced carrots in a can because I have made roast with like raw carrots before and it tasted like dirt so now i always just stir these in at the end and it's super good okay this is honestly my favorite way to make a roast you could just stop with the first ingredients i showed you and make just like roasted meat and then put it over mashed potatoes which is so good but i don't want to do mashed potatoes i just want to do like red potatoes so this is what i'm gonna do so let's get started i do not sear my meat either so there's that but I'm gonna put it in an Instant Pot, but I'm gonna do it on slow cook at first. And so I'm gonna slow cook this. It's, I don't even know what time it is because our power flashed off and I can't tell from the thing. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna probably let this cook for about six hours um, on like medium to low in the Instant Pot. And if you have an Instant Pot, you know like the slow cook has three settings. So it has like low, medium, and then high. Um, I'm probably gonna do it in the medium setting because I got started kind of late today. But just take your chuck roast and plop it in. Ew, that's so gross. Ew. Okay, just plop that in. And then you're gonna come in with your seasoning. So usually you would just use like a packet of this. But I don't have a packet, I just have this because I bought it from Sam's. So I'm just gonna go in with like, I do add, I do add liquid to this, I'll do that in a second. Um, go in with the brown gravy mix. And then the same with this, you would normally just add a packet of ranch mix, but I'm just gonna go in with a cap full again because make it easy on myself and then you're gonna put in a packet of the beefy onion soup mix just the onions fine too but the beefy one is way better so take that and it's got like the chunks of like little onion in it and stuff it's super good it's just like a gravy mix with onions um just sprinkle that on top and then i'm gonna grab some chicken stock and i'll be right back okay honestly you could use water but why not use this if you have it so I'm just gonna dump in some chicken stock. Just kind of coat the bottom of it. I'm pretty sure the Instant Pot you have to have liquid even if you slow cook. So that's good. I don't like adding too much liquid because I like it thick, but I probably added like this much and this is the big container. So I'd probably say like two, a cup and a half probably. All right, now I'm also gonna season it with some salt and pepper because I feel like it's blasphemy if you don't. Are these not so cute? I showed them my little Hobby Lobby fall haul. <laughs> They're so cute, but. A little bit of salt. I don't get too heavy on the salt because all that other stuff is salty. But we're going to plop this on. And then let me show you the front of the Instant Pot so I can show you what I'm setting it at. Okay, so I have the eight corn Instant Pot, by the way, if you're wondering. It's the big one. But you're just going to go to slow cook. And then I'm going to adjust because I want it on normal, not high. And then I'm going to go for uh, six and a half hours. And then in a little bit, let me turn you around. Now later, after this is done with its slow cook, this is why I do an Instant Pot. After it's done with its slow cook, I'm gonna pressure cook it for another 40 minutes because that just like completely makes it so tender and so delicious. And then I, this is gonna get complicated, but I'll tell you. I do that, I release the pressure, like, man, like manually I release the pressure. And then I add in the potatoes and the onion and I let it pressure cook for about three minutes and then I let the pressure naturally release and then I stir in the carrots and it's ready to go. So I'll show you that later when it's ready. I cannot wait. I love pot roast. It's one of my favorite like things to eat in the fall and it's still kind of hot here but I don't care. I'm embracing it as you can tell. I don't I don't care but I can't wait to show you this when it's done. Excuse my, excuse my absolute disgusting appearance but me and Jonathan have been outside doing our exercise for tonight and I need to put the instant pot on pressure cook so let me show you how to do that okay. so it's on slow cook still 
It didn't finish out. There's like a little bit of pressure in there. Not a lot. And the heat will be on slow cook. So that's what it looks like right now. Like a good gravy in there. That looks good. I'm thinking about adding some cream of mushroom soup. I honestly don't know, but I'm going to do it after this pressure cook. So, it's still really tough after slow cooking all day. So, I'm going to put this on seal, just like that. You can see. And then, I'm going to go off, then manual. And I'm going to pressure cook it for about, I'm going to say 40 minutes because I want it really tender. And me and Jonathan are still outside exercising and stuff. So, I'm just going to pressure cook it on high for 40 minutes and then I'll come back and show you the rest. Okay, I'm literally not showing myself to y'all because I look disgusting. We just finished exercising, but I'm gonna pop these potatoes into just this roast. The roast is already pretty tender. It did its um, stuff, it did its thing. Push back down in there, put that in there. And then I just took an onion and just cut it in half and that will disintegrate as it pressure cooks. I'm gonna pressure this for about five more minutes and yeah, I'm honestly debating adding cream and mushroom soup. What do y'all think? You think I should add cream and mushroom soup? Mm, why the heck not? Let's add it. Okay, so I just added that cream and mushroom soup. You can see it in there. Let's go ahead and twist our top back on. And by the way, this took forever to me to manually use the pressure. It's already sealing because it's so hot. Um, so put it back to sealing. We're gonna go manual. Oh, for like five minutes. Why does the Instant Pot take forever to get down like that? All right, let's let that go, and then it'll be time to eat. I guess I still have to show you myself, even though I look absolutely disgusting. So, we have picked up softball because I played my whole time as a kid until I was 16. Me and John started dating when I turned when I was 16, and I tore my rotator cuff at practice one day, so Jonathan never actually got to see me play. Like, we've been friends for 10 years, and he's never got to see me play. So, we started just hitting the ball for fun, and it's like really turned into a workout, so we just talked, we'd take it up, and we've been doing it every afternoon. And it is a workout, for sure, and my blisters on my hands are like coming back. They hurt really bad, because I haven't had them in a long time. But, anyway. All right, there's our like little pumpkin mac and cheeses. And then here is our pot roast. Where's my tongs? Here's the pot roast. It's so tender, see? It's just like, look at that. I don't like mine to be like super stringy, but oh my gosh. It's super good. I've already been breaking it apart. I kind of like having big chunks of mine, so. The potatoes are perfectly cooked. The onions got cooked down. All I have left to do that I should have already done, but I forgot, is stir in these carrots. Let me do that. Just dump, literally just dump the can in. And then stir them around so they get hot. Look, oh my gosh, this looks so tasty. I love hot roast. And like I said, you could totally put this over mashed potatoes. We've done that plenty of times. Actually, this was our Christmas dinner this past year and it was so good. I just take some tongs and shred it up. It'd be easier with two sets of tongs. But there we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready to eat. All right. That is all for tonight's dinner. And yeah, I'm sorry I look so gross, but I'll see you for tomorrow's dinner. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this week's What's For Dinner video. I just filmed a grocery haul, so all my groceries are still out. I'm about to put them up, but Jonathan's on his way home. So I'm about to start supper. I already started it this morning. So right now I'm gonna preheat my oven to, oh, whoops, I wasn't paying attention, to 425, there we go. And tonight we are making uh, Trish Yearwood, Yearwood's uh, chicken pie recipe. I made it before a long time ago and I really liked it. So I'm gonna make it again. Um, I already shredded, I already cooked two chicken breasts this morning and shredded it. I just shredded it, put it in the crock pot. And then I also put the green beans in the crock pot. But I'll show you that right now. Okay, so we're making the chicken gravy pie or whatever I wanna call it. It's Trisha Yearwood's recipe. But I went ahead and cooked this chicken in the crock pot this morning just super simple i just cooked it on low you know how you make shredded chicken in the crock pot 
And then, so I just took the chicken out and left the juice in the crock pot. And this is my new crock pot. I love it with the little lid. It okay, opens up. I put my green beans in there with three beef bouillon cubes with just like the leftover chicken liquid that was in there. And now I'm just cooking those on high until it's time to eat. And they're gonna be super duper yummy. It's just two cans of green beans and then three little beef bouillon cubes. Um, so that's what I did with the green beans. They're just gonna keep cooking while I'm doing this. Now I'm gonna get started on the casserole. And I'm gonna use my new cute casserole dish I got from Home Goods the other day. It's so pretty. I got two of these the other day. But I preheated the oven, so now let's get started on the rest of it. It's a super easy recipe, and I'll make sure I put it in the description box so that way, you know, it's not a recipe. But let's make it. Okay, first things first, you just need a pot, and then you need a can of cream and chicken soup. I happen to use like 98% fat free. I just prefer it because why not save the calories if you can, and it still tastes really good. So let me get this chicken over here. Um, just gonna put this in this pan, in this pot. Now, we're gonna take chicken stock and do two cups of chicken stock. So, chicken broth, chicken stock, whatever you wanna call it. Oops, I'm just splash that everywhere. Whoop. That's all right. <laughs> At least it's like kind of like water, you just clean it up like that. You just gonna whisk this together. And then bring it to a bowl. This is 10 ounces, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm splashing. I'm making such a mess. <laughs> okay. Now you gotta heat this up. I feel like it needs like gravy or something and it. it'd be so good. But anyway, let that go. And then we'll go on next step okay so now this like just like heated up so now you're just gonna pour this over top of your shredded chicken here I'll put it right here maybe it um, and then you're just gonna set it to the side I wish this was thicker I'm surprised it's not it's been a long time since I made this like a few years so just kind of mix that together I guess the chicken is supposed to soak it up I don't know it is gonna bake for a while though okay can I just go ahead and pour this in the casserole dish? Mm. I'll just let it sit there for a bit. Mm. No, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in the casserole dish. Cause it doesn't make any sense to have it sitting in this bowl for no reason. This is such a cute casserole dish, I love it. Okay. So I guess we're just gonna let that sit there. This does not feel like it's gonna get thick in the oven. It's all right, we'll figure it out. We got this. Now, I have to take, oh, I'm just gonna use that same bowl because why not? I think she did too when I watched the show like five years ago. Um, I have a stick of butter melted and then it tastes like a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, it says. So we're just gonna eyeball that, why not? Well, they always say measure with your heart. That's what I'm doing. And then now I need a cup of, all oh, my cup measure is on this one. A cup of self driving flour. And then you need a cup of buttermilk. I feel like I need to reread these directions because. Am I supposed to put the butter? Pause, please. Let me reread these directions. Okay, so I put the pepper in the butter. It was actually supposed to go in the flour, which I did seriously I was thinking, like, why aren't you putting this in the flour? But. Okay, it's fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pour the cup of buttermilk into um, the butter, because the butter's not that hot. And then we'll go from there. So it's like a little bit over a half a cup. So we'll go like over a little bit, one and a half. Whoop, there we go. Um, okay, I feel like I put too much buttermilk. It's fine, whatever. We're gonna go with it. Um, let me sprinkle it a little bit more flour. So I definitely put too much buttermilk. Now, it says you just like drizzle it in, stir it in. That's what we're gonna do. And then you just pour it over the top and you bake it at 425 for 45 minutes. Oh, that looks right. I think it looks right. It looks a little, I, I kinda add a little bit of garlic. Like, it, ew, I just ate flour. It doesn't call for garlic, but I 
mean, why would you not? Garlic makes everything taste better. Okay. I think that looks right. Like the right consistency. That's what it looks like. So now you just take it, and I think she spooned it on the top of the casserole dish. That's what I'm gonna do. And it does rise, like it sinks down a little bit, but then it also rises. I'm just gonna clip the sides because I don't want it to get like all brown and nasty where it has like a little bit of extra batter on the side. So there we go. This is what it looks like before, and the side's hot because it was over the thing. So that. And I'm gonna put this in the oven for 45 minutes. Oh my god, I can't with this casserole dish. It's so cute. Okay, we're gonna oh timer. I like to do this timer. Alright, 45 minutes. I'll show it to you when it comes out. I'm excited. I still can't get over how cute the casserole dish is. I really want to make some macaroni and cheese in one of them. <laughs> okay, I just pulled it out and it looks so good, all bubbly. And like the biscuit dough or whatever that is, is all cooked. So now we're gonna probably let it cool for about 20 minutes or so or else it's gonna burn our taste buds off. But it looks so delicious. Hello, let's make some chili. It's gonna be crock pot chili, but I'm gonna start it off in a pan first and go ahead and cook the meat. And yeah, I'm really in the mood for chili tonight, so. I don't usually make it in the crock pot, but we're just gonna go with it so that way I don't have to dirty a pot on the stove and just let it roll. Okay, let's just get started cooking the meat and then we'll put it all together in the crock pot and let it roll for the rest of the night. Okay, so let's brown up this meat and please ignore that I'm in my pajamas. I did not have to leave the house this day and so I wasn't gonna get dressed. But anyway, I just put some diced onions that I already had bought that was pre-diced in the fridge. I had them from hot dogs this week, so I put those in the pan and just sauteed them around. And then once those get cooked, I'm going to add in my meat, my ground meat, and I use 96% lean ground meat. I like the leaner the ground meat for chili because I don't like to drain it and I also don't like greasy chili. So I use that. I'm going to pop that in there. I'm going to add some fresh garlic in there in just a second. And I'm just going to let it all cook until we're ready to dump it in the crock pot. And if you missed those seasons I added in, I actually tried the Kinder's uh, wood fire chili seasoning. Because you know, if you know, you know, if you watch any of my videos, you know I love all their seasonings. So I tried that. We really, really liked it. Um, it was a little sweeter than what I would normally do because I normally make my own chili blend. But it was still really, really good. And then um, I added in a couple little shakes of ranch powder because I love ranch powder in any kind of ground beef thing. I think it adds such a good flavor. So yeah, I added those two things. Crock pot. I always like to use a crock pot liner and I'm just going to take our beef and just dump it in the crock pot. Crock pot liner is the best invention ever because then I don't have to wash this big old huge crock. Okay, just dump that in. Get it all in there. And I'm going to add the beans next. So I use light red kidney beans. The light red is important because I don't like the skins as tough as they are on the dark ones. I just dump the whole thing out. I don't drain it or rinse it. And then I do a can of pinto beans. I like the pinto beans. Pintos. And then my favorite bean is the cannellini beans. They're super tender bean. And they are really yummy. Y'all can probably hear Kinsley in the background. Okay, there's my beans. And then I'm also going to go with like a little bit of chicken stock, probably like half a cup. And then my tomatoes. I'm going to use strained tomatoes. 
I've never used these box tomatoes before, but I've heard wonderful things. Like they're like the best tomatoes. Let me figure out how to open it. Does it tell me how to open it? No, it doesn't. I mean, I'm struggling. Wait, that one tells you how to open it. Oh, that one has like a cut line. This one doesn't. Oh, okay. I think I figured it out. Let me get some scissors though. I guess you're supposed to cut. Oh, here's a knife. I guess you're supposed to cut it. Oh, well. I'm just going with it. <laughs> so these are like crushed tomatoes. It's almost like tomato sauce, but with like all the stuff in it. That one. Oh, my crock pot's kind of small. And then we're going to go in with ones. I guess you're supposed to tear it, cut it. I don't know. I'm, let's get, get some nerves. Oh my gosh. I know it's not safe to cut with a knife like this, but I don't feel like cutting my scissors. Okay, there we go. These are the diced tomatoes. And I might only do the diced tomatoes because I'm out of room in this pot. And I did a big bottle, big thing of those strained ones. So let's just go diced. I got tomatoes on my shirt. Let me clean this mess up. And then if I feel like I need to add these later, I will. So I did the diced tomatoes and the strained tomatoes. Then now let's stir this up. This is a four quart crock pot too, by the way, so it's not a jagging crock pot. Now, let's let that roll. And yeah, I have it set on high for six hours. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, it was so loud. Um, I have this set on high for six hours. So let's let that cook and we'll come back when it's done. And I think it's gonna be delicious. So some sour cream on top, mm -mm -mm. so good. I also want to add that I add uh, like uh, probably half a tablespoon of sugar because you just need something to combat all the um, tomato acid. I can't get my container open. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, okay. You just need something to combat all that like tomato acid. So I'm just going to add like a pinch of it in or a pinch and a half um, and then just stir that up because that tomato acid, it really needs something to break it up. So that's what I use, a little bit of sugar. Okay, I definitely forgot to record this before we ate it. So like you can see it's almost, it's like three quarters away gone. But this was so good. Jonathan said it was really good. So I think I like that seasoning pack. I would definitely use it again, but it was so delicious. Thank you so much for watching this week's What's For Dinner video. I know it was a little scattered, but I have definitely missed making these videos. They honestly hold me so accountable to keep from eating out so much, but thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed these cozy dishes for fall and winter coming up, and I'm so excited.